ruining your life, just became my life's mission. You found the best place, for your vengeful needs. We start off with a new neighbor, who built a driveway across someone else's land without permission, and refused to compensate them for it. But when a flawed hero came knocking, he ended up compensating. Compensating quite lavishly. Followed by a story about an insufferable busybody, who makes it her life mission, to harass her neighbors for parking legally. Here's the wisdom freebie for this story, if you run into a fart face in the morning, you ran into a fart face. If you run into fart faces all day, you're the fart face. Followed by a bully pickup driver, who likes to damage someone's lawn repeatedly, and refuses to stop honking. He did stop though, and all it cost, was a roll of duct tape, some water and a trash can. The fourth story will overload your vengeful needs, as it's about a selfish neighbor, who claims a piece of the public road to be his, and is alone. When they don't heed his warning, he'll slash the tires. Enter a year-long petty revenge act. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge stories, might be disturbing to crazy neighbors. This occurred in a small town in Canada. I was visiting my friend at his dad's house. This was in an area where the land is so steep, all the driveways have to switch back up from the main road to the houses. A straight driveway was not an option, because it would be steeper than the building code allows. A few doors down the road, lived a nice old couple who until recently, had had a vacant lot next door to them. When the lot had sold, the new owner had started construction on a new house. Unfortunately, the lot was so steep that the new owner built his driveway partly on the old couple's land, it was carved out of the hillside with an excavator. Imagine two lots next to each other on the uphill side of a road with the property boundary perpendicular to the road. The older couple live on the left when you're looking uphill. The new driveway is for the property on the right, and it snakes up the hill in a, roughly, S-shape. The bottom 50 feet or so of the driveway crosses the old couple's land to reach the road. The reason the guy built the driveway where he did, was because it was cheaper and easier than making it all on his land, not because there was no other option. This probably wouldn't have been a big deal if the new owner had approached the old couple first and asked nicely. But did he? Would I be telling this story if he had? In fact, the old couple had no idea what was happening until they came home one day to see a huge scar in the hillside, snaking up from the road in front of their house, across the corner of their property. It wound upwards to where an excavator was working to prepare the land for their new neighbor's house. They were pretty upset, but being nice reasonable people, they figured it was an honest mistake, so they went over to talk to the machine operator. He didn't know anything useful, but he was happy to give them the phone number of the new property owner. The old guy gave him a call and politely explained the situation, but his new neighbor, whom he'd never even met, was having none of it. He flat out denied that the driveway crossed the property line, and he was so rude that it made the old guy pretty upset. At this point the old couple weren't sure what to do. They double-checked the property pins to make sure they were right, and of course they were. But after further conversations with the new owner, it was clear he was an unreasonable guy who wasn't going to come to the negotiating table willingly. The old couple didn't want to take legal action because that would have been expensive, and frankly, the damage to their yard was already done. At the same time, they couldn't just let someone walk all over them like that, especially if they were going to be living next door for the foreseeable future. So the situation stewed for a while as construction continued on the new house, until one day when my friend's dad saw the old couple in the neighborhood and they started chatting them up. Of course they told him the story about the asshole new neighbor. Now, my friend's dad really likes the old couple, who don't have a mean bone in their bodies, so he was pretty pissed about the situation, and when he went home he couldn't get it out of his head. That evening, after a few beers, he had a brilliant idea. He called up the old couple, explained his plan, and asked for their permission to carry it out. They chuckled and gave him the go-ahead, so he hopped into the rusty old full-size pickup he kept as a second vehicle and drove it over to the old couple's place. Where he parked it across the encroaching driveway, making sure it was entirely on their property. The next morning the work crew arrived bright and early to find that they couldn't drive to the house they were building, because some jackass had parked a crappy old F-150 across the driveway. They saw the note in the window with my friend's dad's phone number on it, so they called him to ask what the hell was going on. He explained that he had permission from the owners to park there and that, no, he would not move his truck so they could get to work. Furthermore, if anyone attempted to tow the truck, they would be charged with trespassing and theft. There was no way the construction guys were going to haul all their tools up the hill by hand, 
and they didn't want to get in the middle of a legal battle. So they just called the new owner to let him know they'd be taking the day off and that they'd continue to take days off, until the property boundary dispute was resolved. The new owner called the old couple in a fury, but the old couple told them the same thing my friend's dad told the construction workers basically. The vehicle was parked on their own property, so if he had a problem with that, he could go fuck himself. To make an already long story shorter, the new neighbor ranted a while, but eventually he wanted his house to be built, so the nice old couple ended up with a significant sum of money, in exchange for an easement, allowing the driveway to pass across the corner of their property. My friend's dad got several thank you cases of beer, and the satisfaction that comes from putting an asshole in his place. For those who think I made it up, thanks for thinking I'm so clever, but judging by the number of similar stories I read before, I think this happens pretty often. Not too surprising considering the number of houses built each year in the world. For people who noticed. Yes it's true, my friend's dad drove after drinking a few beers. Every hero has his flaw. I lived across the street from a very bored stay-at-home mom, whose excess idle time turned her into an insufferable busybody. Her husband backed out of the driveway and slammed into my roommate's car parked on the curb. He apologized, gave us his insurance info, and took care of it. He was never a problem, because he accepted responsibility for what he did. His wife however, demanded that we never ever park any cars at the curb again because We can't get out of our driveway otherwise. The street was very wide. She was just completely unable to accept that the accident was her husband's fault. So she figured we were somehow responsible for it, ergo we were responsible for preventing it in the future. We told her that we would avoid parking there whenever possible, but that we still had the legal right to park on the street, and that if necessary we would still do so. We also told her that it was her and her husband's responsibility to avoid hitting other people's legally parked cars, when backing out of the driveway. She wasn't happy with that answer but just told us we better stay out of her family's way, and stormed off. One day, she came storming over, banging on the front door, cussing us out. We got her on our security camera saying, If you don't move that freaking car in the next 10 minutes, I am going to freaking total it with my truck. It'll be your fault, and you'll have to pay for the damage to my freaking vehicle. To this I simply responded, I don't know whose car that is, but I didn't park it there. I have you on camera, so if you do anything to that car, I'll have to call the police and hand over this tape. She then threatened to sue me for invasion of privacy for recording her, and still insisted that we move the car, even though it wasn't our property. We just ignored her, and she did not do anything to the car, we did keep the recording though. A few weeks later, I had a friend visit from out of town. He parked his car on the curb, and then started unloading some stuff from his trunk. She came storming out, screaming and cussing at him. I've told you repeatedly, never park your freaking car on this curb. If you don't move it, I am going to freaking total it, and you can freaking pay for a new goddamn car, as well as the damage you do to mine. He tried to calm her down, and asked if there was somewhere else he could park. She replied, You can park it, in hell, because that's where you'll be after I freaking kill you. Unfortunately for her, he had his dash cam running the whole time, and it captured everything. He called the police, and she was arrested for threatening to commit vandalism and for threatening violence. A few days later, she left a long-winded hate letter in our mailbox. It was written as if it were an open letter from the entire neighborhood, and it basically said that nobody knows who you are, and everyone wishes you would move away, and nobody wants you living in our neighborhood. Thing is, she forgot about the security cameras. I took the video of her opening my mailbox, which included her taking all our letters out of the mailbox and rifling through them which I gave to the post office, which in turn led to her getting arrested for a second time that week. After that, we used her two arrests, our collection of security and dashcam footage, and her letter to get a restraining order against her that actually prohibited her from entering her own home. How is that even possible you ask? The boundary of her property opposite to our house was 65 yards from our front door. The restraining order prohibited her from getting within 100 yards of me, my wife, our roommates, and our home. So basically, since we live so close to her, the effective radius of our restraining order encompassed her entire house. There are usually exceptions for this, but since she threatened violence, vandalism and tampered with our mail, they decided it was justified. Back to the story. Then we called the police every time we saw her, because she was in violation of the order. She ended up having to live in a hotel room, 
and her husband came over, apologized to us, and asked if we would drop the restraining order so his wife could come home. I told him I would do it, but only if she wrote me, my wife, our roommates and the friend of mine she threatened, a one-page apology for her harassment and that she would promise to never ever contact us again for any reason whatsoever moving forward. What do you think happened? Well, I received no apology, and the house went on the market a week later. Some freaking people. We don't own a car and live at the end of a cul-de-sac. I have people use my driveway all the time to turn around. As there's no exit, and only to turn around from the way you came. It's easier for them to use my driveway than a three-point turn their way out like Austin Powers. It's not a huge deal to me, a little annoying when they compact the snow and it's harder to shovel but whatever. One of my neighbors had a ride service come pick up their child every day. The van would park in my spot and begin honking at like 8am. This wasn't ideal, as I worked nights at the time. This were 6pm till 2am shifts. So nights, but not quite overnights and I usually got up at around 10am. Every time he'd wake me up around 8 or so I wouldn't be able to get back to sleep. Hence why I needed him to stop. Half the time he'd be half parked on my grass. I told my neighbor that I don't overly mind my spot being used, but not if he's going to honk like that every morning and especially not if he's going to drive over what little lawn I have, repeatedly. She spoke with him, he ignored it. I spoke with him and got, What's your problem man, it's not like you're using it. To which I repeated that I don't mind him using it if he stays off my grass and doesn't honk every morning. Apparently suggesting he wait till the kid notices he's there or, God forbid, he have to drag his ass out of the car to knock on a door was just ridiculous and inhumane of me. So I left a recycle bin at the foot of my driveway. He just ran over it. I called the dispatch for the ride service and was told they are subcontractors and technically self-employed, but nonetheless, they will pass along the message. I wake up the next day to pounding on my door. Dude is pissed. He yelled. How dare you call my boss, you stupid piece of shit. What the fuck is wrong with you? Well it's quite simple, you were told not to use my driveway if you were going drive on my lawn and wake me up every morning. Now get off my doorstep. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'll sue you if I lose my job, because of you. You've been warned. Don't trespass on my driveway or property again. Dude storms off in a huff spouting obscenities etc. So this happened on a Thursday, the kids have a PD day the next day and it's supposed to be one of those delightful Canadian weekends, where it drops to like minus 40 Celsius. For my American friends, minus 40 is where Celsius and Fahrenheit meet up, so it's freaking cold, lol. So that night, I grabbed one of my more beat up plastic garbage bins, made sure to plug all the holes with a generous amount of duct tape. I stuck a sign on it that read, private property, driveway not for public use, and proceeded to fill it to the brim with water. Now, before anyone thinks I'm a jerk willing to potentially endanger the other kids in the car. I'd like to point out that my neighbor's kid is the first to be picked up, so it's just him in the car. Cue Monday morning. He sees the garbage can, backs up a bit more and defiantly charges the garbage can as if to teach me a lesson. Then proceeds to cause some pretty serious damage to the front end of his car. Dude gets out fuming, calls the cops and comes pounding on my door screaming about how I'm going to buy him a new car and that I'm about to be arrested. Cop arrives and says, So, let me make sure I understand this situation. He asked you not to park here and if you could refrain from honking, then warned you not to park here and put up a barrier. Now you expect him to be charged and pay for damages you caused yourself to your vehicle in an attempt to destroy his own personal property. I will never forget the look on his face when the officer said, yeah, that's not how this works. And turned to me, asking if I wanted to pursue charges for him damaging my personal property. I just gave him the most shit-eating grin I could muster and said, Nah, I think we're good. I then went back inside to enjoy a morning coffee, while watching him from my kitchen window as he paced back and forth in the cold, waiting for a tow truck, and having to call the company he worked for, to explain why they needed to send out another driver to complete his route. I never saw him again. As far as the police officer, I wasn't aware that it wasn't up to me and he didn't say anything about it either. I assume he really didn't want to have to bother with the paperwork and thought I may have gotten upset if he'd said, well I don't see the need to press charges at this point, so he made it seem like it was my choice. Source for this logic, I'm somewhat lazy and would likely do the same. This happened at the beginning of the 90s. 
there was a bloke who lived over the road from me. He had a little no parking sign in his front window. Keeping in mind this was a public road and there were plenty of places to park. I parked in front of his house, because you know, it's a public road. He comes out and goes bananas, that's his space and I better move it or else. I refused. Next morning, the front tire has been stabbed. Fair enough, can't prove it's him, but it was him, so. Revenge time. I bought an old Ford Fiesta for 300 pounds. It was a complete shed and genuinely had 14 owners before me. But it was motored and I tax slash insured it for virtually no money. In the UK every year your car needs to go through a series of tests at a certification location to ensure it's roadworthy. That's when you need a mow. This way you could use it on the road while being properly insured, or park it on the designated public road. The certification lasts 12 months. The car was from 1979 or 1970, so it was at least 10 years old when I bought it at the local in-person auction place. It was a rust bucket and full of features. It was possible to see the front tire through the footwell whilst sitting in the car. This led to internal flooding when driven in the rain. The front wipes failed all the time and windscreen wash slash spray was foot operated via a small rubber ball thing. I waited for his wife to move their car from their space and park that bad boy right outside his house, on the public road. Again, bloke comes out, goes crazy. And I just smile and say, enjoy. Left that wreck outside his place a full year. Tires got stabbed, windows broken, even got spray painted. Kids would be playing in it, which enraged the bloke even more. All the while, I just left it there. Once it became apparent what I was doing, I took to parking my real car in different locations within a two minutes walking distance from my house. It really was a small price to pay for the 12 months-ish level of enjoyment this gave me. Called the scrap yard with a day left on the MOT and laughed my pajamas off every day. I don't have any before and after photos of the car, I wish I did. As noted, this was at the very start of the 1990s. I'd considered repeating the process every year, till he either eats crow or has a mental breakdown. In fact, we moved a few months after the first car got taken to the scrap yard, but I still considered repeating the process even though I didn't live in that area. I decided to spend my cash on something else instead. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe to receive future episodes, and tickle the like button for good karma. Do you have any experiences surrounding this topic? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.